if we take the time back 12 years, 2011, 2012, we only had very few clinical trials where we tested the first BTK inhibitor, ibrutinib. And that was the start of a paradigm shift in CLL, that we got access to much better treatment, and especially to treatment that works for the high-risk, more aggressive CLL patients, especially the TB53 aberrations. And then fast forward to today, we have at least three approved different BTK inhibitors, covalent BTK inhibitors, ibrutinib, acalabrutinib, and sanabrutinib. We also have clinical trials with non-covalent BTK inhibitors, and we have BCL2 inhibitors. We even have trials testing by specifics. So we have a plentitude of different treatment options. That's very fortunate for our patients, but it put a lot of questions to us as treating physicians and clinical researchers. How should we use these different drugs? When should we use what? And during the last year, we have seen publications of head-to-head -head testing of ibrutinib versus acalabrutinib, ibrutinib versus sanobrutinib. It seems that the adverse event profile is different for these three different covalent BTK inhibitors, and probably the efficacy is the same. We may see that differences in terms of toxicity and discontinuation rates eventually turns into differences in terms of efficacy because if the patient stop treatment we know with BTK inhibitors they will have a progression. So the question is what is the future for acalabrutinib? And from my perspective I might be biased by the clinical trials I design. I believe that the future is combination treatment with time-defined length because our patients experience ongoing adverse events on BTK inhibitors and other ongoing treatment. And we see from real world data that the discontinuation rate is higher and the median time on treatment is only three years. Thus, we need to do something where we can treat patients for the fine length of treatment, get them off treatment, and maybe we need to monitor them in a way where we can restart treatment at the time point of molecular relapse and molecular prog progression before we have clinical progression and further immune dysfunction and maybe increased risk of infections.